despite what their moms told them. They just aren't talented enough for radio. Unfortunately, anyone can have a show these days. Sean. Well, I'm pretty hard to figure out sometimes. I can't even figure myself out sometimes, so don't you try to. Joe. You're an idiot. And really, a disloyal person. This is the Cuse Militia. Those two unapologetically biased, orange-blooded homers, Sean and Joe. It's the most bullshit thing I've seen in 30 years. Welcome, orange men and ladies. Happy Wednesday. This is the Cuse Militia with Sean and Joe. At Cuse Militia on the socials. Go there, join the militia. Look, some technical issues yesterday. That's why we are here today. And it looks like we're still having them on YouTube. So... Uh, we will continue, and I'll fix that later. Uh, the Syracuse Orange football team will host the 25th-ranked Seminoles this Saturday, primetime, in the Dome. Uh, one last chance to pack the Dome, show these kids some love on senior night. We will get to, to our predictions, but there will be no fan feedback for this show, unfortunately. Sorry, we did it last night. We did an almost hour and 20-minute show last night. and Sorry it, for everyone who's in the green room. Man. It did not work. So it did not become a thing, and so we're left with contemplating even doing a show and trying to make up for it, but we decided to anyway. Um, I, yes, last night I was just so frustrated with everything, I just kind of gave up. Um, something glitched during something glitched during the middle of the, the, the one of the, the opening segments that we did that wasn't live, and then when it came back, everything was is reset. Everything... On the computers was reset. All of the programs were reset. Nothing was going through the way it should have been going through. And so uh, there was the only audio was me. And no one wants to just hear me talk to myself. So um, it sucked. <laughs> I was pissed. every Because I always have a backup file, too. So I always have a backup going. I have a backup going right now. And um, even that was reset by whatever wire came loose or whatever when I when I pushed it back in it didn't fix anything but the sound that you and I could hear Joe so anyways no. long story short that's it we'll we'll push on we are going to give you the meat of the FSU preview and then we'll do basketball uh, it's going to be the second time for us it's going to be the first time for you so um like to hear here we go the all-time series between Syracuse and Florida State at, sits at 12 and 2 in favor of the Seminoles. FSU is currently on a two-game win streak. Syracuse for, took the first meeting between the two teams back in 1966, 37 to 21. The Seminoles took the last year's meeting, 33 to 30. Syracuse has only beat FSU one time since joining the ACC last year. Um, it was a seven-play drive in the last minute in the fourth quarter in a tie game that would eventually get Jordan Travis and the Seminoles down to the Syracuse 16 to attempt and make a 34-yard field goal. In those seven plays was the 24-yard Travis run on third and seven. We heard Coach talk about that play in the Clemson postgame presser where he was um, explaining the escort out of bounds. It was that flag that was thrown. And, you know, that was the play that that kind of ushered in that type of that type of response. So uh, Garrett Schrader with 137 yards rushing and three touchdowns in that loss. So by the numbers, okay, basically goes like this. And I'll give you what's important. And that is total offense. Syracuse is 88th in total offense, okay? And uh, they are averaging 368 yards a game. FSU is 15th. They're averaging 483 yards a game. FSU's rushing offense is 17th to Syracuse is 66. So they're averaging uh, they're averaging about 212 yards a game. Total defense, Syracuse still holding strong at 15 and um, that just just goes to show how resilient this team still has been on defense. Um, the rushing defense though, uh, the rushing defense I should say, 62nd. They're allowing about 141 yards a game. FSU's defense overall 17th in the country, only allowing 308 yards a game and the rushing D is 69th with 143. So that's that's that. So the the seminal rushing is quite stringent, okay? They've got they've got um basically they've got four backs including um Jordan Travis, but 
They did lose three straight. They were all good teams. Wake Forest, North uh, NC State, and Clemson. Um, but they just destroyed their last two opponents, Joe, Georgia Tech and Miami. Georgia Tech 41-16 to and 45-3 to over Miami. Um, so look. The three rushers include Jordan, including Jordan Travis. They average at least 4.5 yards a carry. Uh, the leading rusher, Trey Benson, is averaging seven yards a carry. Um, Trey Sean Ward is averaging 6.8 yards a carry. Lawrence uh, Tofilly is averaging 4.6 yards a carry, and then Jordan Tra- Travis himself is averaging 4.5 yards a carry. And if you want to get technical, there's Rodney Hill. He's got 18 rushes, averaging 6.3. So, just for what it's worth. The way I see this, Joe, and the way that things have played out recently just makes me a little bit nervous because I think this is just another recipe for disaster in in the Syracuse run defense. And with keeping fresh legs and capable backs, and not only that, but you're having a Jordan Travis who is not just a kind of quick progression, then takeoff running type of quarterback and he's more sitting back there and being calculated. He's got like 2,200 yards on the season so far, 2,259, um, 17 touchdowns, four interceptions. He's only been sacked nine times. It's a problem. Okay. This team is multidimensional. And I talked myself up on a ledge when I was doing the research. So what do you got, Joe? You talk me down. You gonna make me jump. (laughs) What what are we doing? I don't think I'm going to do either. I mean, by the time I'm done, you'll probably still be up there. But uh, looking at the same stuff you're looking at, I wouldn't see why anybody wouldn't be nervous about this game. Um, just knowing what the other you know teams have done as far as uh, rushing wise against us, seeing what our offense looked like yes uh, last week with um, Del Rio Wilson, and really you know not knowing if Schrader's going to be good to go or not. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's those, and then there's the positive of that, you know, we're our last game is at home. It's our last home game, sorry. We're 5-1 and one at home. The 12th man has showed up, and I'm praying that they show up this week. I think they will. And, uh, you know, it could be, I mean, the last game for Sean Tucker, Mikel Jones, Garrett Williams, players like that. Um, maybe even a Matthew Bergeron, who knows, but... Well, there was uh, John Wildhack said that we might be, or yeah, we could be surprised by some of the juniors that that participate in the senior walk. Well, yeah, and that's the thing is, is that it's one of those. I wish I wish I could be there, and anybody who goes, you know, that's something I would definitely pay attention to because if you see, I don't think we have a lot of seniors, so that walk shouldn't be that that shouldn't be that many players. So if you see some of these players there, um, you know, let us know throw it out there when we do thoughts on the game and everything like that. But, um, you know, home, home field's been an advantage for sure, especially the dome, uh, you know, the crowd we've been getting. And, um, you know, the one thing that, you know, I would look at as well with Florida state anyway, is that it looks like really, it doesn't really matter where they play. It looks like they've just struggled against some of the better teams. But when you look at their away games and their, um, neutral field game that they had against LSU, they're three and one. I mean, they beat LSU, in a neutral field game that was in New Orleans. So let's be honest. I mean, it wasn't really a neutral field, but it just wasn't either at either of the home teams. And they went at Louisville and, and they won 35-31. Uh, um, they just killed Miami 45-3, to albeit Miami's uh, first-string quarterback went out. But uh, their only loss is at NC State, and it was 19-17. And that was the game that Devin Leary went down and Chambers came in. And they ended up getting two, field goal, two or three field goals, I guess, uh, NC State did to – um, get the 1917 win, but um, I mean they were right there in it. And um, Jordan Travis, he threw two interceptions the last seven minutes of that game. So uh, NC State's defense really was the one that won that game. So it'll be interesting to see. Uh, I think realistically, I don't know if the question is. I mean we've seen three teams run all over us, um, but realistically those stats are skewed, just like what Coach was saying. Because you know you can have you can give up all the yards in the world if if the other team isn't getting points and did doesn't really matter i mean obviously you know the wearing down of the t- defense and the then the you know big gap of plays run and time of possession that obviously wears on you but uh so far this year it hasn't proven to and um at least not like in the past and uh our defense has kept us in every game it's just it's the question really is whether or not we're going to be able to get this running game back going in what our offense is going to look like this week 
So if it's any consolation for what it's worth, I think it should be mentioned. Uh, we didn't put a montage together, but for the for the Florida State presser from Dino Babers. But as we talked about yesterday, that no one heard. We might as well repeat it. That uh, the body language of coach, if you're to read body language and, and put any ounce of anything into that and speculation, you would think that it seemed like he was um, seemed more positive. He had a more positive feel to him. Now he was asked about injuries, and of course, we all know even if he knew, and he'll tell him too, even if he knew, he's not going to uh, give you any information anyway. But with that said, um, you know, he did say that the doctor comes in on, on Monday night, and he wouldn't find anything out, so we'll never know. But there was there was the body language in, in the way he reacted a little bit. It gave me a little bit of hope for a Schrader. Now, I don't know what's going on with Kalen Ellis, but... Gave me a little bit of hope for a Schrader. That doesn't mean anything, though. That's pure speculation and me just reading, trying to read between the lines for anything I can. Maybe I'm just clinging on to hope, and that's quite possible. Yeah, um, I mean, that, but, I mean, he, he showed up, right? And who knows if it was a, a little bit of gamesmanship there to have, you know, Schrader go out. Uh, you know, and you brought it up last night, but, you know. To, to going dress out and there, warm up at uh, dress Pitt. Dress and warm up, right? But maybe he was close. Maybe. Maybe they were looking at him. Um, you know, maybe they're still trying to drill down how severe this injury is and if it's something that they, you know, he can actually seriously injure or, you know, hurt worse. Or is it just a situation where he can go in there and, I mean, basically play till he tweaks it? And, but and then that's is he going to be out of two Right, weeks, exactly. Right? I mean, that's the thing. So, um, you know, as I alluded to, I, I, I mean, I want this team to be – I want a healthy Garrett Schrader offense – run you know a full full effect offensive line with with gadston and with schrader and tucker you know after a few weeks of practice preparing for a team and going into a bowl and being able to give a good bowl game showing because that's realistically that's what players that's where that's what you know teams and, and other fans you know in the college football um environment that's what they remember you know that year that we beat clemson yeah they remembered it but come bowl, bowl season where was syracuse nowhere to be found no, they were they were chilling at home at the couch, and that's really what it comes down to. So, you know, be able to have a nationally televised game and have you know young kids and fans and and possibly recruits and and future recruits sitting down with a family during holidays and watching a, a, the bowl games like I used to. Um, you know, seeing some of those teams, you know, it, it, it's a big deal, and getting those extra practices are too. So, I don't want them to have to do anything to where they're really extending Schrader to the point where he's not going to be able to be um be able to play in the bowl game so well yeah i mean that's what's important right now right we're not chasing some kind of fantasy of the college football playoffs anymore and it's more or less you know get what you can and obviously be as healthy as possible for the bowl game i mean that's going to be our most important game of the season so, besides the sixth win, right? Um, okay. Yeah. How so, big was that? So, yeah. So, all right. With that said, let's do our picks, okay? We did them last night. We can fake them one more time. So, we are at, Amy did me a solid, my lovely wife. She got me, uh, got me the win. Mostly because oh. Joe's pick was just so far off. Both of the picks were terrible. I mean, when it comes down to it. So uh, I'll move to four and five. Joe drops to five and four. Uh, normally, uh, you know, I would I would defer, but I'm going to take the ball here and I'm going to give you my score. Now, listen, as I said last night, everybody in the green room heard it. That's another, by the way, two things. Self-promotion here, Joe. To sign up for the green room because they got the original show. The original show was quite entertaining i was entertained i was entertained by the green room but i was still entertained Me too. uh so i was entertained you got to get in the green room download the spotify live app sign up with a uh, username email address password follow us at qsmosha sign up for notifications and uh join the in the fun join in the fun so um anyways they got the show no one did because it didn't record um anyways yeah. Uh, look, I, I'm the not sure that never was the show that never was in here. We, it's, it's in the ether and it's only a memory. You know, it's sad. Yeah. It's very sad. It is. Um, and we did plenty of fan feedback last night, which is why I'm not touching it tonight because we're just trying to move this thing along. So, yeah. all right. 
Um, okay. So I'm not trying to be negative, but I did say uh, a while back, I think probably going into the Clemson game, or maybe even the NC State game, that I was going to believe in Syracuse until they gave me a reason not to. But there's a glaring issue right now. And until that gets fixed, a, a game like this has got me extremely nervous. You've got you got four guys that can run the ball. Wait, and what's his name is out, right? Isn't there one guy that's well, injured? Trishon Ward's been out for a while with okay. a shoulder injury, but he was um, dressed and they were – thinking that he might be you know available last week against, against Miami. Miami okay and he didn't play so he could possibly play uh but they did have a right tackle which I still don't know um his availability but they're starting right tackle he left the game so you know asking a, a, a right tackle to come in and maybe not have got as much playing time this year in that environment maybe that's you know gonna be for a couple false starts who knows but well you got Trey Sean Ward who's the second leading rusher on the team He's averaging 6.8 yards a carry, 488 yards on the season already. And now he would be the leading rusher on the team if he Oh, okay. I'm sorry. Okay. He was the starter. All right. Gotcha. So, um, I mean, right, they well, were the ones who, they, they were a two-headed monster. Well, Tra- Trey, Trey, Benson and, and and Trey Benson. Trey Benson's but, an animal then. Oh, yeah. I mean, they both are. Yeah, they both are. That's Florida problem. State's always got loaded running backs. We know yeah. this. Um, all right. On with my point. Um, look, I just don't foresee Syracuse being able to do anything different until they show me they can do something different. Then I'm going to be uh, very worried. Say, say just south of cautiously optimistic, um, which is getting into negative territory on that front. But look, they have the game plan now. This isn't just the the this isn't just the the game plan for teams that can do it. This is what they do. They're, they're a run-heavy team, and they've got the guys to do it, and it makes me very nervous, and I'm worried about shortening the game and not getting stops and things like that. you got guys who can just um, pound the rock, and that makes me nervous. So with that said, look, I think uh, th- there's still a glimmer of hope in me, but I, I, f- I feel like they're going to drop this game. And I got 31-17 to 17 Florida State, and I hope I'm wrong on senior night with – with a, with a packed dome, I hope I'm wrong, and I just hope that you know the crowd can make a difference. In that, you know, look, Marshall beat Notre Dame, you know, so this is not out of the realm of possibilities. But well, that just shows you the, what happens when you lose a quarterback in the middle of a game. Well, that too. But the cards are stacked against us, I think, in this in in this game, and I think that the the cat's out of the bag, so to speak. So that's what I got. Is that a thirty one doesn't matter who starts? That's it doesn't matter who starts because I'm just not sure. I mean, this is this is kind of a happy medium, I guess. Um, you know, it, on that front, Joe, I guess, you know, we're not real sure if Garrett comes in, is he just gonna come in and kill it? I, I don't know. I don't know. I'm not so worried about us being able to get something going against this defense as I am about their offense getting going against our defense, I guess, in the run in the run game. So that's where the game's played for me, is if, if Syracuse can't stop the run, I just don't see how they win the game. Yeah. So it doesn't really matter, well, really. Yeah, I got you. And and, and it kind of goes with my comment as well. Like I can't sit here and answer this question based upon – I can only answer it if, if Schrader was playing and I knew he was 100%. Um, and we saw him at 100%. Uh, so don't really know the percentage of what he could be at that could still make him a better option than, than Carlos Del Rio Wilson, but I just don't want to see him continually just, you know, keep tweaking whatever's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and answer based upon the Carlos Del Rio Wilson stuff, like that he's going to start. Um, okay. And I think that the offense will put a, together a better game plan. But like you said, we've seen the recipe. It's the same thing, right? So – we can't get down early um, against this team and put them in a position where uh, they're just going to run it, run it, run it. Now, the good thing with Florida State um, is that they don't seem to be a team that that you know methodically on purpose, you know, takes the the air out of the ball and like you know runs down the clock Holds and everything games. like yeah. that. Right? Yeah. So I mean, they average 483 yards a game and 33 points, and they have played, you know the three that they lost to and LSU. So um, this is an offense that likes to go and tempo and all that other kind of stuff. So 
Um, it could really, really be ugly if what they're doing is working and our offense looks like we did last week and they're just scoring faster. But again, I, everything that I've seen about the defense is they're a bend and don't break. So I don't see this defense giving up a crazy amount of points. We keep teams underneath their average for the most part in, in, in points. Um, so, I mean, is this the week where the floodgates open? Like they have before in the past in November. I don't know. But I can only imagine that you know that our offensive coordinators and, and coaches and stuff like that are going to be able it. to put together a better game plan in Florida State. They can give up uh, some running, some running yards, um, some rushing yards, stuff like that. So really, let's they're a big, it's, big play team. They're a big play team, and at the end of the day, like we can't put ourselves in the position that we did last week against Notre Dame because these guys would do the same thing because. Um, that's what they want to do. They want to pin their ears back and they want to go. Uh, I remember, you remember the defensive end Jared Verse from mm-hmm. Albany last year. Yeah, that almost ran down Sean Tucker and then he transferred and we wanted him. Well, he's one of the better, uh, you know, pass rushers in the ACC. So it's a situation where we don't want to put ourselves in a in, in a point where we're having to pass and drop back every play and they're just pinning their ears back because they're going to do the same thing that Pitt did, especially if Alice is out again this week. So. Um, I'm going to go that our defense holds some big plays, but not crazy. We hold them under their, their points, but I think that they'll eventually get the win 27, 24. All right. 37, 17, 27, 24. Okay. We will, um, we'll, we'll see. I mean, um, I, uh, it's not out of the realm of possibilities, but I can't just sit here and honestly just keep picking Syracuse with what I've seen the past three weeks. I just can't. It would be a disservice because it's not what I believe. So I can get on Twitter and pretend like it all day. It's just not there. So anyways, all right, let's move on. Syracuse defeated Lehigh. Uh, now, this is kind of old news. I know, I know, I know. But we did talk about it yesterday. So we'll, we'll quick go over this. And I put together a montage. Those things take time. I want to use it. Uh, 90 to 72 was the score on Monday night. Uh, let's let's listen to the very first Coach Beheim presser of the season. Ready, go. I think before I start, I'd just a quick comment about Jake uh, passing today. Uh, I don't think people realize uh, what a pivotal figure he has been in Syracuse athletic history. Uh, making the change, coming into the dome, making the getting into the Big East Conference. That was his driving push. Other people like me weren't that interested in it, but he was. And getting the dome done, getting a lot of the things done at Manly that needed to be done, uh, you know, obviously bringing Dick McPherson in here. um, I think uh, a lot of things uh, are kind of been overlooked uh, that he's responsible for. Uh, and uh, I, I just don't think he's been well treated uh, by the media or anybody else, really. You know, because he's, you know, he didn't want the spotlight and didn't talk much. So, you know, we, I think we missed the boat on him. He uh, was one of the great, really, leaders uh, of any place in what he did here, his vision, what he did, what he accomplished. And uh, I think that's been overlooked tremendously. I, uh, you know, the game, I thought, you know, Lee has a really good team. They're a well-coached team. They make you move around. I think I thought we did some good things. Uh, our freshmen have got to learn that you can't stand there and let people shoot. Um, Chris and JT did that two or three times, and the guys are going to make those shots. I think the one thing that's really starting to bother me now is Chris has got to be able to get loose balls. If he doesn't, he's just he's not going to play. There's two, three times the ball's right there. You got to go get it. You know, you can't be just a shooter in college basketball. You got to play. And uh, he's a really good shooter, but he's got to be able to do the other things. And defensively, um, all freshmen are struggling anyway defensively, but he's struggling more than most. But he's a tremendous shooter, and we've just got to get him up to speed. Uh, it's a work in progress. We're gonna. Have, we I think we got a little better this week, um, uh, 
but uh, I thought the, the really good parts of the game, Cy came in and did a great job uh, getting us into some things, pushing the ball up the court. Uh, Joe and Jesse did what they have to do. They have to be the two guys that we depend on, um, and they were that tonight. I thought when we made the switch to the zone the first half, Munir come in, came in and made two big defensive plays, two blocks, and we converted down the other end. That was that was very uh, useful what he did there. He's I think he's perfectly capable of doing that. I think Benny is struggling with trying to be out, be a three, two man really, and you know he's six nine, two twenty. He's physical. You know he's most of our sets for him are to screen and roll, get down toward the paint area, and uh, he's fighting that right now. He needs to do what he can do, what's what he's capable of, which I think that's what that is, and get the ball in the mid range area. But uh, and, and the other thing, the first two games, I thought he really focused on his rebounding. And uh, I think he had, what, 12 and 15 maybe or something like that. And tonight he has three. The, I think we can shoot. I think we can shoot those. I think we can shoot from the three-point line. We're not, we're not looking to take a lot of threes if somebody's playing man-to-man, -man, which most everybody plays anyway. So we're not really looking to take a lot of threes. You know, if we get some, we get some open ones, we're going to take them. But uh, um, scoring points, we got 90 playing everybody. We can score points in, with no threes. That's not, a, not relative anymore. If you, if you can, the, the idea is you got to score points. If that's the only way you can score points, then that's what you do. But, we can score inside, we can get to the lane, we can get to the foul line, and uh, you know those are things we, we can do to score. We have to get our defense better on both ends, and uh, that's going to take time. I thought we did rebound a little better tonight, but that's an area that we have to do, do better. But you know, it's early. It's a long way to go. We got a lot of work ahead of us. Um, overall, this was uh, a much better overall outing than the first two uh, exhibition games. So we'll try to try to build on this practices this week. Coach, you talked about uh, Benny Williams' mindset of being a two guard. How do you go about changing that? I don't. <laughs> Coach, you talked about um, the lack of three point. Did not have. Other than he don't won't play. Other than that. Alrighty. Uh, <laughs> doesn't take long uh, to get a good one. Uh, all right, look, uh, it seemed shorter yesterday. Um, that was extremely long, and, and, but I think there was some good stuff in there. We know Coach like draws things out a little bit. Um, okay, so first off the top, Jake Krauthammel is a name many of us probably didn't even know, and I got to be honest, I mean, I've heard the name, but I could have never picked the dude out of a lineup. And um, when you think about Syracuse basketball, football, and lacrosse when I was a kid and the Dome coming up in, the, in 1980 and, and all of those things that he's responsible for, I mean, that was actually the golden age, I feel like, for, yeah. for, for us, you know, growing up, Joe, was some of the yeah. best times for, for Syracuse football, basketball, and lacrosse as the trio, and uh, he was in charge of it. So um, good, good um, little... Shout out from Coach there, and there's some stuff on the internet, and that's pretty. All the, the all of the good Syracuse sites have something, so um, yeah. pretty interesting little history there. So, uh, all right, it was 19 to 19. Okay, halfway through the first half, Syracuse goes on a 10-0 run. Uh, Judah Mintz comes in. He contributes. Um, just an amazing uh, athlete, I think, in Judah Mintz, and we're lucky to have that kid. And then we went on another run later before halftime. Manor Himmas, he he come he's he hits a layup or a, a short a short bunny or something, and we start to pull away. Ger Gerard hits a three right before the halftime, and we're up 44 to 26. So it started slow. We were kind of down a little bit, and we got to claw our way back, but it was obviously never a question. But that's just how Syracuse starts. So it was good. 
Um, you know, I don't know how much we take away from these games. We always say that, you know, these early season non-conference, you know, games that are... No, I mean, just, we've had closer ones. Yeah, we've had closer ones, which is a good sign. I, I feel like this was probably a better team than the teams we played in exhibition. So... Um, and we handled them better. But um, the freshmen uh, need to learn a little bit of the defense. Like Coach was saying, but the biggest thing I think to take out of the beginning of that montage is is, is the Chris Bell stuff. Um, just fighting ever after after loose balls and getting dirty and getting down the muck, Joe. And we had a conversation yesterday about this, and I think it's important to have it again. So when you've got a kid who's a, who's kind of a superstar in high school and he's transitioning into college sports, there's a different level of uh, expectation for that kid. Now he's not just, you know, the star player on the team. He's actually right. got to play as, as, as part of the team and do everything he can, because obviously there's it's, it's optics a lot, especially for coach. I mean, he doesn't have to play him, And he, if he's not going to play up to coaches, the way coach wants it done, he's, he, you heard him. He's not going to play. No, no, I mean, you're you're on a team where you have a bunch of people at your level and players that have been there and proven it, been there and done that right at that college level. So you got to go up there and you got to prove it. And if it's doing the little the little things until you, you know, the guys above you that we rely on, that's proven it. Um, they leave and then it's your turn. I mean, the team needs roles. You can't just have five shooters or five of one thing. You know, it's just you got to find the roles and we obviously know that we're going to have you know a guard heavy oriented role with with Samir and and Judah Mintz and Joe Girard just cuz you can tell that they just handle themselves better um and um Jesse Edwards obviously is going to be a huge cog in the middle and we're going to try to score from the inside out and that's where he wants Benny Williams too i mean i i thought that Benny Williams was going to spend a little bit more time this off season maybe getting you know, just putting weight on a bigger body, right. learning just down around the hoop and doing all the dirty stuff and getting in there and playing defense and playing tough because realistically that's the role that we need him to do. We don't need him out there airballing three-pointers like he did. And I'm not trying to throw shade at him, but he's just got so much potential and he's so much better we, than that. We, and it we, just he, It's like less is more sometimes, right? Yeah, like we, we had so many conversations much. last year about about how the potential was and how well he took the, the beat downs on the bench and just his body language through all of that. And even again, you know, it was Benny, it was Benny and Chris in the in the Benny and Bell in the in the um on the hot seat, you know, on the sidelines. No. And no. I feel like they both took it well. But, you know, you see this potential and Benny just waiting to just be released. He's out there, you know, he's out there shooting when the dome's empty after a game. And he just, you could just tell he wants to get better. He's just got to listen a little bit. And I think um, that will come. But I did, got, I got to be honest, I expected this year to start a little bit different for Benny. And like Coach always does, look, you know, Joe, you and I manage people. At some point, you just get to you get you reach a point where you just got to say what you mean and what you want because there's no more beating around the bush. Your coach has been doing this for 47 years. He doesn't beat around the bush. He's going to go up there. He's going to tell you how it is, and he's not really going to care too much about your feelings because you're either going to what leave. But yeah, <laughs> either uh, you take the heat. Right? You're either going to handle the heat or get out of the kitchen, and you're going to either heed the advice or you're going to probably transfer because you can't take it. And that's you know. That's a whole nother conversation, but coach, he's in the stage of this game where he just doesn't have time to, to develop a mentality. It's like, you have to show him what you're going to do, what you're willing to do to participate. And well, you're not, I mean, you're not a coach for 47 years and get 1100 wins by coddling to players and letting them do what they want to do. Right. And exactly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, that's just not what it is. And maybe some part of some sports, and certain things like that have gotten to that point, but no, I mean Jim Beheim, that's what he comes there. He, you you go to the school, and he's going to be tough. And I'm sure that people know. I mean, I'm sure that. I mean, look at who's his his coaches and everything is. You know, there's probably a bunch of kids that think that he's a big, just, I mean, asshole for lack of a better, you know. But I mean, at the end of the day, you got coaches and you got recruiters that are sitting here and are being able to go to these recruiters and be like, look, I, I played for him. Everything's good. Everything's perfectly fine. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, um, you know, you've got guys like that 
and I think I think he'll develop. I think he'll play a, a you know he'll play the role he's supposed to play three or four, and everything's going to be um, everything will be okay. Because if it's not, then I mean you heard what coach is going to do. So all right, moving moving on some positive sigh. Uh, look, I, I, again, he's just a game changer when he steps onto the floor. He's just a guy that can just change the momentum and speed of the game so fast. And and he's just getting more more precision and, 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 and more focused and just uh, just all around uh, a, a, a better talent. I feel like this year it's going to be fun to watch him go off 10 points, six rebounds, three assists. Um, he went one for two from from behind uh, the arc and he hit three of his he hit three for three from the free throw line and that's kind of um that's a, i mean that if he can yeah. if he can contribute like that every game i mean that's yeah, that's and, huge yeah and coach even alluded to it he's going to be playing he has the trust of the coach and we all know how it roll how, how it goes i mean non-conference he gives all these guys minutes so they can get out there they can get the experience try to shake out the cobwebs or you know the you know if you're a little nervous right the nerves but See how you react, and you know you saw how Judah Minch react, and Samir Torrance, and Joe, and, and Jesse, some of the guys that have been there. You know, which is why I think Benny's play, which I don't, not going to overreact over one game, but that's why Benny's play was a little bit disappointing, right? But even with Taylor and and Copeland and Carey and um, and Bell, I mean, it's kind of all expected. It's their first collegiate game, right? But you look to, to you you expect them to go in there and try really really hard, you know, and that was like the difference between Bell and in in, in carry or Taylor, sorry. I mean, Bell did a little bit better um, on the offensive end, and he did get that steal and went coast to coast. So there was a steal there. So you know, maybe he picked up the D a little bit in the second half or whatever after he got pulled. But um, I mean, Mahir Hema, he looks like he looks like a guy that's going to be able to step in for Jesse, give some minutes, play some defense. I was impressed with him, and and honestly, Malik Brown is is he's trending up for me too. I mean, Copeland's good. And he's got, he's definitely got some range to where he can play different uh, positions and even play like down low in the two three zone. But you know you're not going to be able to get rid of the, you're not going to be able to get those get away with those flashy passes that are getting stolen and, and not get benched super fast. So there's yeah. some things that he's got to kind of cut off too. But um, I mean Malik Brown, I mean he goes in there, he's all business. He doesn't try to do anything flashy. He's that guy and. I see him getting a role just because he's not that guy out there trying to be trying to do more than he can handle right now or more than he should have to. So uh, once these guys figure out the roles, I think I got I think we got the offensive like like offense and defensive athleticism. <clears throat> Hopefully we can play two, three zone and man a little bit better this year. But um, yeah, I mean, we could we could be a good team. Obviously, injuries matter, too, but. There's certain players that are going to have to step up and learn their roles too. Yeah, and coach said something along the lines of threes aren't relative or or something like that. And he pointed to the 90 points that were scored. And look, you know that was a quiet 90 points. And I feel like um, that's a, that's a big sign. But I think what coach really meant by we only course, hit six threes, right? So and I think what coach means by that that they don't matter is are they're not relative. I think was his was his terminology that. We're we could do so much more with this team as far as the athleticism and if we if it's used right and and that's what his point is with Benny is being able to play your role because that's where he needs to be to get into the lane and and make those you know get inside there get fouled get to the line do you know they did an excellent job at the get foul the line rebounds. get the rebounds twenty four for thirty one from the free throw line you had Gerard uh, five for five Edwards eight for ten and Mintz four for four and um. I mean, 16 points. Just excellent, dude. You know, you don't need Benny don't you Benny, you don't need to be out there like that, bro. If you got these other guys doing it, you you you, you know, you're he's going to be That's so be the good. Guys. Yes, he's going to be so good on the inside. And he's going to be so good just just trajectory and in and, and learning how to snag rebounds and all that stuff yeah. and um that's huge because it's where we've struggled the past few years is the rebound department. Remember we used to keep track of it. Like where yeah. we ranked nationally, that's that's how bad it was at one mm-hmm. point. And um, you know, that's in to your point about him up. In you know, you've got this. <laughs> he's a big kid. You know, I feel I feel really comfortable. I think Jesse got away with a little bit more than he should have. Kind of loose whistles. They let him play, like you said uh, yesterday. And I think um, you know, in, in going forward, 
you know, if Jesse does encounter some of those those DQ issues, then I think I feel really, you know, I feel pretty comfortable yeah. with with Moni or Hima back there taking over. Yeah, but we were going to have to rely on him a lot on on offense. But to that point, like I think a lot of it's going to come with these young players and stuff like that. Yeah, Chris Bell, he might be one of the, the second best shooter, but we might not see him that much because at the end of the day, after last year's defense and, and where we ranked and everything and seeing where our offense was, having a top, what, 30, 25 offense and not making the tournament because Cause the defense our defense was wasn't good enough, yeah. um, then it's going to be the other way around. And you look at between Jesse Edwards, Judah Mintz, and, and Joe Girard, that's going to be your big three. And if these other guys in other positions can't make certain things happen, then you're going to see Samir out there, maybe with all three of the guards with Jesse Edwards. But those four guys alone – scored 63 points combined now if you play good enough defense that we've played we've had two three zones in the past where 63 points get you wins yeah so, absolutely yeah I mean, the, at, there was always the low that was that was that was forever <laughs> the low scoring yep. games that we just slowed the play down um mm-hmm. when we wanted to and were able to control it and, and we did it with defense and you know i think we we gradually got to a point where it just i don't know something changed but um, if you want to say, you know, it was the three point game or whatever like that, you know, being able to yeah. take apart the zone. And look, I think, you know, coach kind of showed that he come out with a man to man. And I think all I think all the defense needs work. But um, I think that it, he mentioned it last year, the end of last year or something like that about playing some man or alluded to it. Yeah. But I think that's only going to help because I'm tired of getting killed. With the no. threes, and that's where the the, the the it's just not. I don't know. It's just we're just not built like that anymore. It's just no. Not, it's it's going to be working. interesting to see because we play Colgate next week, and we saw how they beat us in our two three zone because we were lazy mm-hmm. and they were hitting everything, and we just didn't have a great shot. I mean, or didn't have a great shooting night. Um, it's going to be interesting to see how much man we play in that game, and and to see if it's a different outcome. So, yeah, true. I mean, I don't know who's left on that team from last year. I know our team's completely different. Just yeah, a weird, well, what a weird feel, too, watching the team and just not having Buddy out there. Kind of a, yeah, I mean, it was weird, but you know what a weird feel was? was watching a Colgate game and seeing them up double digits and knowing that we weren't going to win. That's a weird, that's a weird <laughs> that's feeling, a weird too. Feel so, too. Yes, I'm, Joe, thanks for bringing back the nightmares. I'm just saying, I mean, this is almost like a, okay, we're going to get you back game. So, yeah. Uh, there's a bunch of players that are going to be up for this game, and you know if you know if Colgate keeps it close, then uh, yeah, yeah, I think. I mean, look, I don't like I said, I don't know how much this game shows us. We we know that um, that Lehigh is kind of one of the top teams in the Patriot League. Okay, if you will, and it's true, and you can poo-poo it, but I just don't know really how good they're going to be this year. They did, re- they did return a lot of players and stuff, and they're obviously got some talent, but I don't know what kind of gauge that gives me. But I think Colgate's a better gauge, and going forward, you know, no, definitely. So, I mean, Colgate they won that Patriot League last year. I mean, they beat Lehigh by twenty in the semifinals. They went to the tournament. There was a lot of play. There was a lot of people that thought that they were gonna they they were gonna get. Uh, did they did they even get an upset? I don't even know. Now that actually Who? makes me curious. Who's that? What's Lehigh? That? No, Colgate last year. I don't know. Um, but look, here's the thing. The defense needs to get better. But there's a long way to go, like Coach said. They've got a ton of work. Uh, I think the team's talented. I think they're athletic enough. And if you get a little bit more effort from Bell and you get Benny knowing his role – which should already be done, quite honestly. But, you know, you get... See, here's the thing. You're playing a Lehigh. You want to get out there. You want to chuck some threes up, you know, look like a hero. Who knows? You know, he's just excited. Whatever. Let's chalk it up to that, right? But if the, if those... There's a couple things to fix, I think, and I think it'll be, it's going to be fun to watch this team develop. I don't know where my expectations sit right now, but like I said, I think um, Colgate's going to be a better gauge and that game will be November 15th, Tuesday. And we will probably do the preview for that on Sunday. And it's not a probably about it. We so, definitely will. So, yeah. I mean, there's just a bunch of teams that are going to have to figure it out. I don't know if you had checked out anything, but, I mean, just the opening night on November 7th, 
you know, number one, North Carolina, they, they only scored 69 points. UM, and beat, what was it? Wilmington? UNC, UNC like, Wilmington yeah. beat them by 13. Duke handled Jacksonville. Uh, Virginia beats North Carolina Central by 12. Who, who, who lost? There was an upset. Oh, Stetson beat Florida Stetson, State. Stetson, that's right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Clem- Clemson beat the Citadel by 11. Pittsburgh beat UT Martin by 12. I mean, just a lot of, I don't know, you know, not blowouts, right? So Cornell only lost by two against uh, Boston College. So there's going to be teams that struggle and figure that there's stuff out. There's going to be out, teams so. that struggle. You know, unfortunately for us, by the time we get to some of those teams that really matter, it's going to be different. Probably figured out. We played Duke in February. Okay, we play. Uh, no, I mean, we play North Carolina Duke's at the end of January. Duke and North Carolina are completely. Different. I know. I'm talking I know. About but the rest of the I get what it. Makes up the I get it. I get it. But North Carolina's returning uh, Caleb Love. Um, everybody. Oh, yeah, pretty much everybody. Everybody but Manic. Yeah, Baycott. Um, but they're going to be extremely tough, and they're probably the favorite to take the ACC. But Duke, with the new coach and everything like that, obviously they've got the talent. And I don't expect them to flounder much, but uh, it still would be better to play them early. I think it just would be, just benefit us anyway. And yeah. I just don't know how de- much de- how much more developed we'll be by then compared to them, but it doesn't matter because that's where no. they're on the schedule. So we'll see I'm just Duke glad- away, too. Oh, no, home. It's a home game. Yeah, I'm just glad that we're back to more of a traditional kind of non-conference that we're normally used to. Um, and, you know, we're going to get a little bit of a – we're going to get a little bit of a struggle here. I mean, Colgate was a tournament team, and like I said, I mean, they – like I said, they made a tournament, and people were talking about being a, an upset. They ended up losing to Wisconsin 67-60 in the first round. You know, four days later we got Northeastern, and then two days later Tournament. we start. Empire. Well, Classic. it's Richmond, but it's the Empire Classic, which means we have two games back to back. So we play Richmond, and then the winners play the winners, losers play the losers out of Temple and Temple St. John. Temple and St. John, yeah. So those are going to be. So I mean, we're going to see here real quick before Thanksgiving. Um, you know what time of, what type of team we are, and then after that, you know, I mean, I'll tell you what, Bryant, Bryant's given us trouble in the past, and. They honestly, they, they were on ESPN. Did you see that today? They no. got uh, called out. Nope. So they beat this team, Thomas College, on Monday, 147 to 39. And he got called out for basically. Uh, you what know. about the, uh, when, didn't the NSU uh, Norfolk State women's team beat someone like 130 something to 19 or something stupid too? I don't know. But I just know that there was a big deal because they were talking about how. They beat them by 108 points and that they couldn't let up. And I just think it's funny because you're talking about Bryant, but they've been a better team. Um, We've had a battle with Bryant the last time we played them. And I don't remember what the circumstances were, but I remember it was a it was a battle. Something to do with the coach or something, maybe? Was there like controversy? Think, something happened. I think he was just cocky. Yeah, he was mouthing off. That's what it was. He was mouthing off, I believe. I could be wrong. But anyway, all right. Look, that's it for us. Two days in a row of the same show, minus the fan feedback. (laughs) Look, sorry about all that. We're a day late. I'm sorry. We got to you. Uh, Really appreciate everybody. Sorry, no fan feedback this time, but it'll be back Sunday. Promise you. For Joe, I'm Sean. We're out. Peace.